What's going on, team? Are you guys ready to get back into it? We are dropping and dropping fast, so I got to make moves, got to look and deal with positions as the show goes on. You guys know where you're at. It's, of course, start swing trading. Let me get my camera up. For some reason, it just kind of fell a little bit there. All right, there we go. Fix that up right quick. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the market action. I actually am... I, I'm in a fast market right now, team. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the SPY dropping fast here. It looks like we got in tech stocks to really kind of drop fast here. So I'm even looking at potentially SOCKS or shorts on the big stocks of the mall, right? Triple top here in the 280s for NVIDIA. It's dropping fast here. But already dropped from around 277 to 272 here. I need to start looking at if I'm going to get short any of these names. AMD is a little bit weaker. So I'm looking more like an NVIDIA name here. Um, this one doesn't look too bad. Of course, it would have to cut down. But where do I get in? I need some type of bounce here. As you guys see, it's going lower. But let's talk a little bit about some other positions I have. I do have PG. This one's pulling back right now. Um, got this one today at 150.60. New position on on this one. Was able to take some profit on one today. That was Gilead. Gilead swing trade. Was able to take the profits there. And also taking the profits in DXCM. That was Dexcom. And you guys see how that turned around today. But I was able to get this out towards the 125s. Took the 124.80s levels on that one. I uh, actually got... 374.52 as the exit there. Um, no, 124.84 as the exit for Dexcom here as it was going into the 125 range. Out of that one, stopped out of DHR. So kind of the profits in DXCM covered a, a lot more than the loss in DHR. So that's how it is. Diagnostics and research. But this one actually climbed back and is back kind of close to where I was in. As you guys can see, a big wick got me out on that one. Taking a look at American Airlines because it is retracing with this market move. So just considering, do I get out of this position? I've had this one up multiple times, about 4%, 4 but I'm just going to keep working that one. Taking a look to see if we're going to get some defensives to kind of climb with this move down in the SPY, or is this just an overreaction? And what's really going on here, team? What do you guys see? Um, Benz at Benzinga, this stream do, don't have an intro. Yes, it does not have an intro, Kenneth. We go right into the action here on Start Swing Trading. We don't need no intro. Why, why do we need an intro? We can just go right into the action. All right, so we'll see what happens in the SPY. Do we keep kind of leaking? And I looked around. I mean, I saw some uh, kind of Putin comments. I saw like uh, U.S. Marine Corp. I didn't really see too much on why we took a hard downturn here, but of course you guys see it. Let's take a look at what else is making moves. TLT. How was that doing today? That was actually climbing now starting to come down here as of course the market's dragging it a little bit. We'll take a look at some sectors. Of course, what was hot and what was not, but what do you see leading right now? Defensives, but even that's pulling back as we speak. Technology about to go into the red for the day as it was actually kind of leading the day, right? I mean, this is what happens when I go to lunch at 2 p.m., team. I, I go to lunch at 2 p.m., I come back, and bam, disaster, disaster. It's how it is sometimes, team. The Fed talk, the Fed talk, the Fed talk. But of course it has to be the Fed talk, right? I mean, we, we had Christopher Waller at 12 p.m., did, did, did he wally up this market? You know how it goes. And then yelling comments to make it better? Oh, good Lord. Well, you guys see it. The turnaround happening here. The only question is, is this really a turnaround or is this just a shakeout to the downside? That's what we got to be asking ourselves. If we take a look, the SPY, though, is battling here. And it's starting to turn around a little bit. Not where we want to see it, right? We want it to get towards the 420 if you're looking for the bullish reaction, right? The new the new bull market a lot of people are talking about. Well, that's if we get to the 420 spot. We're turning around right here around the 415. So we could be heading right back down, especially kind of closer towards kind of the VWAP here. Uh, maybe down back towards like kind of 407.38. This is an anchored VWAP that I've drawn here. And I drew that from the top 
of the range. So wondering if we come right back towards those levels, the 407.43 could be a little pullback time. And I think this is going to be all dependent really next week. Next week, we get finally into some of the bigger tech names, right? We'll get Microsoft. We'll get Google next week. Microsoft reports as, as quickly as Tuesday. So stick around for that. That, I think, is going to be what could can maybe push us back higher. But right now, we're definitely falling off. And Tesla, Tesla, Tesla falling off the tape. And I could see today, early on in the day, that Tesla just didn't want to hang on. You guys can see it here. It just was trying, 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 and finally started breaking down. Ever since then, just letting go. It's down to 161. So I think this one will get into this gap finally. I drew this gap on March 24th. We're now, what, April 20th, almost a month after. We're finally starting to see that Tesla's going in for this gap fill. We'll see if it gets down there into the 150 range. So this one could still look like a short, right? I mean, I'd have to look for some serious bounce in this one to get short. But this one's just fading away and dropping fast. Of course, that's affecting some of the bigger stocks. Let's go to the leadership, right? That's what, of course, Joel Alconin even would tell me to look at. Let's take a look here. As you guys see, Apple going lower here. Let's go to the top of the leadership. Apple coming lower here. Microsoft now starting to come right back down. And Microsoft was in a kind of decent pattern. It was pushing like at one 290s, one at 300 again. Now starting to turn around a little bit. But this isn't a complete disaster yet for Microsoft. Google was really strong early on. Now you're seeing it kind of come right back to the VWAP and start to break down. Looks like we're seeing a lot of turnaround here, even in the strongest names. NVIDIA, you guys already seen how that's turned around. That's not even giving me a chance to come back. You know, if it could come back to the VWAP, I have no problem swinging this short. But for right now, it's not looking good, team. All right, uh, NVIDIA is coming down really fast there. Meta was pretty weak early on in the day and started coming back in the intraday. This one looks like potentially this one could be a short. I actually don't mind this one. We're going to use the resistance right above it, 216 tens here. But I'm going to take a short here on Meta. Just got a little bit there. Want to get a little bit more if we can get a little bit of a bounce into the 50s. Got some there at... 21440s. We'll look to see if we get a little bit of a bounce here in Meta to add to this short, but got a little starter on there. Swing short on Meta, and we'll see how this one works out. Will it get right back down there to the 212s? I really like this one. At least I got some action now to the downside, and got to keep watching the green trades that we have to make sure they don't go into the red, right? PG slightly into the red there. We'll see if that one stops me out. But it's a defensive name. If anything, I would think this one would get a little bit of a lift if we're going down, unless it's an everything kind of sell-off move here. And you guys can see the SPY is coming down pretty fast here. So we'll see what happens here if this keeps going down. Um, looks like Fed Logan uh, says inflation has been much too high. I don't think that's really what it is, really. I mean, why would inflation be the one that's taking us down here? I think this is kind of more just letting go also of some tech names and taking some tech profits, especially after Tesla scares a little bit and starts knocking down. So we'll see what happens with these names. How's TSM? TSM was going into the green. Will this one go right back into the red? It looks like it's starting to head right back down. We'll see what happens with TSM on the downturn. All right, let's keep it going, team. How are we doing out there? What's going on? Tesla under 160 looks interesting. Yeah, it definitely does. How low on Tesla? You never know, really. But the gap is right down there. No bull market, bull trap, says Hammersaw. Once the market convinces all the hedges to go long, then we dump huge. We'll see. I mean, you also got uh, options expirations, right? Those probably came in. We'll see what happens to these as we keep getting further down into the week. All right, let's take a look at what else is making moves here. Energy going down also. So oil stocks coming right back down here. XOM having an ugly day. This one actually looks like I could swing it short um, just based on the pattern here. If I'm looking for a breakdown of the support, but 
I don't know if I really want to come after this one. Valero is one that I've come after before, but that one's already falling off the wagon here. It came back up here towards the 36, and maybe should have just got right back in it because it's right back down there to 122 and kind of cracking down here. Fill up 66, starting to crack a little bit there. We'll see what happens on these oil names. Even the Oxy starting to go right back down here. Should I go after Warren? Hmm. Fighting Warren, Mitch? Ooh, I don't know if I'm going to do it right now, but definitely oil on the breakdown. Healthcare names starting to pull back. So I'm a little bit concerned about a name like Gilead that I have deep into the green today and don't want to give up the profits for no reason. But I also took the position in RMD. This is one that we talked about yesterday, team. We talked about how it was going to look for kind of the throwback look. That's a look where you get a move back above the trend line and it comes right back into that. And then you look for the reversal. Yesterday, getting that indecision day, I wanted to look for a pullback in this one. Took my shot in RMD. I got this one at 20, uh, 222 30s. It's at 224, and it's gotten up there to 225. But, of course, not going to let this position go against me. If we're going to keep cracking down here, we'll see what happens on that. As the SPY just goes lower here, doesn't look too bad for that meta position. But some of these positions are going to really start coming down here and coming down fast out of the green. So just kind of focus in here, see if I'm just going to take the profits and run like on an RMD type of trade. Just got to watch because if the market keeps leaking like it is, a lot of these are going to start going back into the red. Transport's holding up. We'll see what happens out there. You guys smash the like. Did someone say something that caused this pullback? Sal, people are saying that the Fed – talk is causing this pullback um i mean where are the comments w what did they say that was really negative i mean i don't see the comments out there on different kind of outlook but i'm looking around two hours ago when you got meister talking here indicating high interest rates likely ahead i anticipate the monetary policy will need to move somewhat further into restrictive territory this year with the Fed fund rate moving above 5%, the real funds rate staying in positive territory for some time. I think this is everything that we expected, right? I don't think this is saying that we're going to go to 50 basis points, but the market is definitely pulling back here, and that is true. And it could also just be the turnaround of this tech trade. I mean, this tech trade has really been strong, and now we're seeing what? Multiple times that it tried to get back up here, now starting to fail and start coming down. Does this mean it's already broken? No, it doesn't mean it's broken by any means, but definitely pulling back on the day. So your strongest ones could be the first ones to kind of show you that pullback, like an NVIDIA. So that's why I've been watching NVIDIA today, and it's just leaking, leaking. I mean, when we first got in the show, it was up there towards 273. It's already at 271. Wouldn't have been a bad one taking a shot. All right, what's going on, Walter? What's going on, Easy? Let's keep it going. All right, if you guys got stocks that are dropping fast, you guys want to talk about them, we can take a look. How's gold reacting to this? Hmm, also coming down here. You know, I wanted to see if maybe uh, GLD was going to start going to the upside, right? I mean, still nothing on that end. And I mean, this is where it gets interesting. Pretty much it seems like an everything selling off rally here. Even defensives going down. So what isn't going down right now? That's the hard part. And when it's everything, that's where you got to be careful. That's where we got to be careful with our long positions because they easily can start to flip to the red. So we just got to be protective of the green that I have already on the day. At least I'm going to be it because you know how it is. We got to take our profits first. And if I need to get out of trades, one thing that I've noticed is that there's sometimes where the market just turns against you. And you just need to get out of some trades. There's nothing wrong with getting out, especially taking some green. PG still hanging on that one. The worst one I have right now, and it's only down about 0.6%, is Honeywell. Uh, so Honeywell's pulling back here towards the 196 area. I want to add on this one towards 195, but it is coming down fast. Just going to keep an eye on it to see if we can catch a little bit of a bounce. GE finally reached that 100 today, but turning around, 
Did it just top tick at 100? Hmm, it very much could. As you're starting to see what kind of this indecision candle at the 100, I'm not going to be short in GE by any means, but definitely it turned around at that 100 today. Got up there though pretty quickly and now coming right back down. I got trapped in Mara. Ooh, Matt, it happens to the best of us. This is why I'm watching my positions that are in the green right now. Um, because, I, you know, one thing I don't want to do is be up a certain percentage, a pretty good amount on like one, two, three, four, five positions and give it up, right? I mean, I have a total of seven positions right now, two in the red, five in the green. Got to keep that green though, right? And you're seeing Mara, look at that turnaround, ugly turnaround. And it could be little bull traps, right? Riot probably coming right back down on that downside. And that shows me more that the tech trade could be turning around. So Sox S is one way that I could hedge myself to try to get some more on the short side, right? So I could be going after Sox S. You look at the daily chart. This actually looks interesting as it's starting to try to get through the 20s here. And I'd have to risk off of like maybe 18 here for the swing. I don't mind it, but... Going to keep an eye out on here on Sox S. It is going higher. It did take that nice little bounce. It kind of like a cup and handle pattern right here. You guys can see that at cup, handle, trying to keep going higher. Would have to risk off of here probably about a buck. But doesn't look too bad there as we're seeing this come lower. Of course, uh, there's going to be some other tech names reporting tonight. Let's take a look at what's on the docket for tonight. All right, so tonight we were going to get some earnings, of course, coming in here. We're going to get, let me put this pretty big here. Uh, so tonight we're going to get CSX, PPG, Berkeley, not too much. Uh, but we'll also get PNG tomorrow. And you guys see I'm in PG right now. It ain't looking good as it's pulling back here. Starting to get into the red. That's where it gets a little bit concerning because I would like this to kind of had a nice little rip up and it can sell into before the earnings, but it ain't looking good for that one as it's pulling back right now. I'm just keeping a close eye about to cut it, but going to give it a chance to make that little recovery, but I'm pretty much down like a couple pennies right now. We'll see what happens on Slumburger. That's an oil stock that could be heading to the downside. HCA Healthcare, SAP, Regions, what about the regional banks today? Let's take a look at that trade. Hmm. KRE still have this one, but just slightly up on the KRE as this is pulling back fast here. We'll see what happens if it kind of bottoms out here in the 4350s. Really don't want to see that break. Getting another kind of alert here. And I don't know what these stocks are doing sometimes, but Amgen pulling back here and pulling back fast. Biotech stocks starting to come back right quickly back towards 430s, uh, 243s. I've been looking for this one to get back here towards kind of the 240 level so that I can maybe take a shot on a pullback entry. But right now, the way the market's falling, I'm not taking that shot. Gilead, one that I saw get up, where, up there today, almost towards the 85, now pulling back fast. So with this one being said, it's one of my top positions in the green right now. And... I'm not liking this turnaround that we're seeing. So we're going to go ahead and just take majority of it off here. I can still leave a little bit of a piece. So I'm going to take a little bit off here, take some profits there in Gilead. Just took some off there. Going to look around. RMD is another one that I took today. So this one, I might just take the profits and run. It's not a bad little day trade here, but it looks good to continue higher. So I wanted to kind of keep watch to see if the SPY can actually just stop moving down, right? That's all I really need right now is just stop leaking. Well, there you go. At least we're getting kind of a double bottom here around the 41050s. And you guys are definitely seeing me trade a little bit more today because the truth is stuff's moving. So I got to keep up with the positions and keep looking at what's going on in mine. All right. Uh, Hammer saw had to cut the crypto exposure earlier. And I agree. Sometimes you just got to cut the exposure, right? And I feel like right there, that's what I'm doing right now. Starting to cut the exposure. Always hard to judge a why when I when I wasn't there to see it. Seeing murmurs related to the Telegraph articles about Russia outside of UK. Yes, I saw that. 
I saw that, Walter, and I and I think that that's probably what scared the market a little bit more. That's why I wasn't thinking that it was too much of the Fed comments, but who knows, really? And if I, I mean, of course, if if Russia is going to expand the war, well, yeah, the market will take a, a huge downturn, and it'll be pretty wicked. So we'll see what happens here. RMB up a significant amount. I'm going to go ahead and take this one off today. This one turns into kind of like a day trade because, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I didn't swing it overnight. But I have such good profits on there. I'm going to secure good profits on there, limit the exposure, take all the money and run on that one. RMD is not a stock that I know too much about. I just really like the technical setup. I took the shot. It got up there today. I started, maybe should have taken it all out at 225s when it was there earlier. That was a kind of intended first profits, uh, but I got a little picky there. I thought it could continue going higher and just taking it all out there just to take some profits. Meta continuing down, so that's not looking too bad there as I got Meta going lower. This is one that we just took live here, and look how this is coming right down towards the 213 area. So just protecting the gains, right? I mean, if we're going to lose them, might as well just take them, right? At least that's the way I feel. And I'm still seeing more decline come in there. So just focusing on names like, let's say, like AAL, because this is declining pretty quickly here also, back to 1336, when today it was up past 1360. So we'll see what happens there. The market will rally off a of real war. Who knows, really? We'll find out about that. I have a long hold on Riot at 836. Hope I don't lose the battle. Hey, wish you the best of luck, Jenny. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what to do, but I, I wish you the best of luck. I know I have a friend that also has a position in Riot, so a little part of me rooting, but we'll see what happens. Uh, AAL still falling, SPY still falling, Meta still falling. So you can see here, we did like a little line here. Let's see if we cut through that. If we keep just leaking for the rest of the day, well, then we're going to just have to take some profits. And it's okay to maybe get back towards no positions. Because sometimes one thing that I really focus on, of course, my trades, my setups. But when the market is telling us something, I need to react. This is one thing that I've learned in the past. And if you fight it, what ends up happening, all your positions end up dragging you down. And it's a lot of it. Why? Not necessarily your setups, but probably just because something might have happened in the overall market, the SPY leading us down. And if that happens... Well, you'll start to see some cracks. All right, AAL going lower there. That's a little bit upsetting. Might have to just take the profits and then look to try to reload back below 1309s. I think this could go lower back towards like the 12s, but just giving it a second to see if the spy can actually bottom out here. I'll show you American Airlines right now. This is coming down there towards the 335. It's just up there to the 1370s. We got this one two days ago. Uh, right by, well, it was, yeah, two days ago, we got it at 1309s. It kind of rode up yesterday, even past uh, kind of the 1360s. Was watching this one kind of work today, but falling pretty quickly here. We'll see what happens on it. All right, PG starting to go back into the red here. Not liking this outlook here. So you know what? I'm really tiny in the red here. Got from 150.60 to 150.43s here. Just going to go ahead and cut this position. It doesn't look the best. Has earnings tomorrow. Wanted it to ride up. So cutting that one. Keeping Honeywell. That's another loss that I have right now, at least in the red, uh, on the unrealized. We'll see what happens on the meta. Meta is still going lower. So that looks good for me there. KRE might start coming down here. So I got to determine what I'm going to do on KRE. I just don't want to see it break the 43.50 here. So I'll show you KRE. That's starting to come down here. We'll see if it cracks. Does the SPY keep going lower? That's really what I'm kind of focusing on. And you can see it there starting to crack a little bit further. So let's see if it just gives us the big whoosh bar on the five minute through like the four tens is what I don't want to see. Recovery here and back to 411. We could be building up at least a little supply here. You can see how it's going sideways. Let's see if we take the four tens on the downside. And now I'm seeing uh, like Google. I'll watch to see what happens to this. This was really green on the day. Look how quickly it's going into the red. And we'll see if it goes into the red for the day. This is up still about 0.58, but coming down fast. 
NVIDIA down about 2.32, Tesla down further, and really starting to see a little bit of a turn in this tech trade. All right, what else is going on out there? Clean reversals off this week. Uh, NWOG this afternoon. All right, MP down to its near 52-week low. Yeah, when Tesla gets crushed, I talked about it uh, on live trading. When I see Tesla get crushed, a lot of time the lithium names get crushed. So let's look at LAC going lower there. LTHM going lower there. MP going lower there, right? SQM going lower. Look how those dropped in the pre-market even. And I mean, you're actually above those levels now. So we could take a look at lithium names like that. And they are starting to break. Steel was strong early, now starting to come right back down. So you got to be careful there. Gold, will gold get a little bit of a lift finally? Spy, now finally bottom out a little bit. There you see it on the five minute. So it doesn't look too bad. At least we didn't just burn through that 410 and just continue to leak. But I'm going to keep an eye on like a stock like Meta because now that the Spy is bouncing, Meta could bounce also. So we'll see if it gets a little bit of a bounce here. I'm up a decent amount on Meta, up from 214.40s, but just going to continue to let this work. Run. Run was making a good run. And look, this is probably a hard turnaround. Ooh, let's see. Ah, it actually kept up. Not a bad one there, Matt. We talked about Run. Of course, they had like uh, a ratings two days ago. It pulled back. One, two days, and then now takes a nice little step up. So this is exactly what you want to kind of be looking for. Not a bad little pattern as it starts to push higher. But let's take a look at First Solar because that was pushing strong earlier, and now it's pulling right back. So this is where it gets difficult. You got to keep your eyes on the leader because the leader is going to tell us what happens, right? I mean, if this comes crashing down through the 200, I wouldn't be feeling too good about that. KRE trying to come back into the green here at the end. Let's see if this starts to actually push here. Just got a nice little volume candle. So I'm keeping an eye on to see if maybe some of these banks can start making a move. If they can start making a move, that could maybe raise us right back up here. Watching the spy, get a little bit of a bounce there, back almost to the 411s. Let's see if it can get to 412s and shake a little bit of that downside. Joe Dan Doe taking a arc long. That's a brave position. Can't blame you on that. Let's take a look at that. ARKK, how's that doing? I will let you know that I got stopped out in ARKK today. So can't blame you for going for this one. Um, got a little bit of a stop out on this one. I cut this one earlier at 3760s. Um, got it at just above 38. Was going to give it a little bit of a chance, but didn't really want to see it break 38. So as we started breaking through that, just started cutting it, gave myself a level to cut it through. And out of that one, we'll see what happens there on ARC. This is what started getting me a little bit concerned about ARC. It was getting dragged because of Tesla. That was one thing. And then what my thing about uh, ARC was I started looking at some of the top positions, right? And look at Roku. This looks like a good short opportunity for me. So if anything, you know what? I, I actually might take a little bit of a, if we bounce here, especially right now in the market, get a little bit of a bounce. I don't mind a Roku short. And the reason why is look at the daily chart. I mean, this thing has been going sideways here, sideways here, trying to get back to 70 and could crack here towards the 60s, right back into the 50s and below. So uh, at least for Roku, I'm looking for that to kind of crack there. It does look pretty heavy. Zoom also looking weak. Zoom tried to make this move up to 80s, has been retracing since then, and could just make a new low there on Zoom. I just don't think Zoom is what it used to be, and there's plenty of other competition out there. So I think you might blow through this low, the 6490, and keep heading lower on Zoom. So we'll see what happens on that one. And to see what happens on some of the ARKK names. Will this just get hit? Shop. That was one that I just had recently. I just made a nice little win on it. That's pulling back even a strong stock like Shop right back to 48. We'll see what happens there on Shop. Spy overall now finally back towards 411. So we're getting a little bit of a bounce. That's not the worst. 420 day, man. I thought we were going to get 420 on 420. It seems like it's not going to happen, unfortunately.
Well, stick around, team. Smash the like. We got, of course, a guest that will be joining me at 345 today. I'll have Leah, the trader. So we'll see which positions she's looking at. And, of course, how she sees the market. Maybe she had a, a Tesla position. I got to find out. We'll, we'll have her on in just a few minutes. That's going to be in about 10 minutes at 345. Take that Tesla puppy. We'll see. All right, let's get towards some of these other stocks. How's NVIDIA? Did that climb back? Ooh, it's at 271. Just got a little bit of a bounce. But man, we watched this thing just go down. It went from 280 down to 271 in just about, what, one, two, three, four, five, six hours? Six hours, it fell 10 points. That's something to watch for. All right, NVIDIA definitely turning around there. And look at the RSI. Look at the RSI read. This is telling me something. This is something that I need to pay attention to. I know that this is definitely overbought, and a lot of people have said that. But now we're getting what? We're getting kind of a good confirmation here. So you started seeing the downside action in the RSI as it was up towards the top. That gives us what? That's called a negative uh, divergence, right? When your RSI is going down and your price action is going up. This is very important to catch team. So when you start seeing that, what you want to be looking for is which one is not leading here, right? Price always leads, right? So RSI is lagging here and RSI is telling me that it's starting to get weaker. What do I want to see is can it make an attempt to go back to the upside and fail? So let's say if we just drew like kind of like a trend line here. So you can see how this came up through these levels, rejected that, started to come down, came back, rejected, came down, rejected, and came down. Those rejections are very important. Those show us what? That it's starting to weaken there. And it tries to come back towards the highs and rejects again. So this means that, at least for me, that it could crack through this support this 46.59 daily RSI, start working its way down and work its way back towards oversold conditions. So we'll see what happens here on NVIDIA if this really is a crack and if that 280 top is going to hold. It's at 270.60s now and it looks like it wants to go lower to tell you the truth. KRE turning right back around. It tried to go to the upside, couldn't do it team. So on KRE... I know I wanted to hold for a little bit longer time, but it's not working out today. We're still in the green. We're seeing the market come down a little bit. I'm not feeling too confident about this one anymore. So I'm going to take the money and run, team. That's what it's about sometimes. Taking that money and running in KRE. Just took that off, 43.49. Let's get out of that. Let's let this do whatever it needs to do. If it wants to continue riding high, it could continue riding higher. We'll see what happens through 44 tomorrow will be something to keep an eye out. Of course, I won't be here next week. So with that being said, do I really want to keep KRE? Probably not because I would have to keep a really close eye on it. And I don't think I'm trading on the cruise team. So smash the like up. We'll see what else is going on. Uh, why is Nintendo an OTC stock? Because the reason is it, it doesn't want to trade here. So Nintendo doesn't want to trade here, Glenn. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it trades in the Japanese markets, but you can take a look at that. Of course, Nintendo uh, is an OTC, um, but there's a lot of stocks sometimes that go to the OTC markets just because they don't want to trade here. There's different regulations, right? Different things you got to follow if you're going to trade in the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, things like that. All right, so uh, at least from now, I of course, I've taken some honey, Honeywell. Uh, I have still Meta to the short. That we're going to look to continue just working. Gilead is starting to come down. Of course, I took some profits on that, so not feeling too bad about taking some profits on it as it keeps going lower. Of course, won't let it break my break even. Just going to let it work back towards that. If it needs to stop me out, it will. And on American, I'm going to do the same. If it needs to stop me out, break even, it'll stop me out just there. All right. You'll be on vacation or what? Of course. Of course. Going on vacation next week. So I'll be out for the whole week. I can't believe it. I haven't had a whole week vacation in just about 
I don't, I don't think I can remember or ever. Uh, but we'll see what else goes on. Uh, let's keep it going. Easy. I will wander aimlessly all next week, 3 p.m. Monday to Friday without Money Mitch's show. Easy, Mike. Don't worry. You guys can go check out Joel's show, if anything. Go check out the cl closing print. Closing print will be a good show for you guys to check out while I'm gone. And, of course, I'll be back, team. It's only one week. You know I'll be back and ready to go. And definitely, after a cruise, I'm going to want to make some money back. You know that one. So stick around, team. We'll be looking at some good, good trading ideas that will be coming back to you guys, of course. And I'll probably be closing just about all the trades while I'm gone, unless there's maybe something that just stands out to me. And I'm like, man, I got to have a piece. Maybe like if I still have American and it takes off, maybe we can keep that. But definitely, this is a day that I see a little bit of a turn in the market. Now, the only question is going to be, is this really kind of Fed scare? Is this more related to geopolitical issues? And are we seeing a turn in the tech trade? Those are the questions that I'll be asking myself. Uh, in just about a couple of minutes here, we'll be joined by Leah, the trader. You guys smash the like if you guys are excited about that. Good to see you, David. Don't worry, Jenny. I won't fall off the boat. And if I do, I hope I swim good. <laughs> I'll be all right. Uh, Kenneth, you were on vacation last week. Hey, well, then just go on vacation next week, man. You can, you can get two weeks. I'll let you go. No worries. All right, let me look at what else is making the moves. Will NVIDIA catch a little bit of the bounce? If I still see that leak, you know, I can start taking a look at some other ones. I know Intel was making a nice move as of late. Is this starting to just come right back down? That's what I would be looking at. Names like that, like let's say like Micron that started making its way back here. Is it still in the green? Ooh, starting to turn back around here. So names like that that are near the VWAP, that still doesn't look too bad. To start seeing that break down. Soxs, how's that doing? Pulled back a little bit to 1950s, but looks like it wants a little bit higher here. I think that one's going to be, could be at 20 when we open tomorrow. So we'll keep watch on this one. That meta short, we'll see if that can bounce back or not. And definitely starting to see a little bit of a turnaround. Snap down 7% today. Oof. Is TikTok not going to get banned? Yeah, that looks to me like TikTok's not going to get banned. So uh, all you TikTok uh, fans out there, looks like uh, you're looking good at least for Snap. Huge turnaround in Snap coming right back down to $10 today. That's probably going to affect Meta too, right? If we get news that TikTok isn't going to get banned, hmm, who knows? I'll keep watch on Meta. Took a little bit of a piece. Willing to add. Come back to me. I'll add. Let's see what happens. All right, that's Meta Platforms. Of course, taking a little bit of a changing attitude in the day. Earlier on the day, I was really like, I was feeling bullish. But this turn in the market, you got to be nimble and quick in this market. And that's one thing that I'm being a lot better on. It's not, you don't have to stick to the prior kind of outlook that you had in the market. It's okay to be flexible. It's okay to adjust with the market. What's really important is being quick. To that decision making skill and that's what we all work for as traders right is to build our decision making skill so that we when we get to these moments what do we do we have confidence in our own abilities and that's so important smash the like all right we're gonna go ahead and bring on my guest today so you guys smash the like i'm gonna get out of my stocks right here let's go ahead and bring down my charts and let's bring on my guest today of course leah the trader you guys smash the like I know that you guys have been waiting. Let's hit it up. Let's find out what Leah's looking into today. How are we doing today? Hi, Mitch. How are you doing? Nice to be here. I'm doing great. It's good to have you. I'm definitely uh, kind of in a fast market because things turned around here. I went to lunch at 2 p.m. And I always say when I go to lunch, the market does not like when I go to lunch. <laughs> uh, it, it's almost like I'm not allowed. If I take it at one, it drops at one. If I take it at two, it drops at two. So I don't know what it is. I don't know if someone's fading me while I go to lunch, but man, we got a hard action move there. I heard a lot of Fed talk came into this, but what did you see? Have you heard anything? 
So I was traveling all day. So I just took some swing trades and I actually, I just hear you talking about SOXS. So I've been trading this, this one every day, pretty much overnight. And um, ah. this morning I took my profits right at the open and then I got back in. And now when I'm looking at the daily chart, like the nice hammer candle is forming. And of course, when you look at Nvidia, that's just exactly inverse thing. Nvidia is having a hard time. Yeah. yeah, I sit in many tech stocks, like they are breaking through the 10 EMAs and um, mm -hmm. we have the 20s below. So we'll see what happens. I will be closely observing those. And I am actually right now long SOX and I will stay long overnight. And yeah, so Tesla, I actually sold puts on Tesla for a swing. I sold 145 regular on uh, May, so May 19th. And um, just to protect myself, I bought 125 puts so i got about 225 uh premium on those spreads which uh i like to do because you never know like the tesla chart on daily looks absolutely horrible so <laughs> we are like breaking below everything there so um we might even fill the gap that's between 155 145 who knows so my puts are 145 so i feel kind of safe um, I sold a couple of those, and mm -hmm. yeah, as I said, like if if you if you don't want to risk too much, it's always good to have the lower strike uh, for for protection, you know, in case that Tesla would have really bad time and go God forbid below one forty five. Yeah, so far I'm not adding. Yeah, I will I will see how it happens because really this this looks ugly the chart. I don't want to be buying dip that keeps dipping on me, you know. So yeah. That's it's what a I, hard turn. Yeah, definitely. I, and, and you could see yeah. Tesla tried today. It tried to get back to 170, but yeah, it, it couldn't tried. do it. No, definitely. and it was expected. I mean, if you look at the chart, I mean, we had the lower highs forming in, on, in, mm -hmm. in March, you know, so it's like an ugly double top there, which it's not surprising. I mean, you know, they're having a hard time right now. So, but in any case, I, I sold the puts. I'm not buying the dip yet. If the dips to 145, I get assigned. Okay, beat. Plus I make money on my 125 puts. So that's what I would do. And um, and I'm looking at, I was I was uh, trading on on a o a. I'm sorry, O-N-O-N. -O -N. I'm not sure if you were mentioning this one already. Definitely. This one uh, has been hot and I, I got to get the shoes. I got to check one out. I, have you yeah. seen these before? No, I don't have them. <laughs> you you got to check them out. You got to check them out. It, it, it's the Roger Federer shoe, you know? Yeah, I might. I, I don't know. I can't have everything, but this chart is great. And even today, you know, we, we again almost retested to the 10 EMA and now again going up. Uh, it's 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 been an overcrowded trade. I've seen everyone posting about it, but yeah. um, but I've been trading it for a while. Now I think I've been in the swing for a couple of weeks, just taking partials. Yeah, that's a nice one. So as I said, I'm going to observe the semiconductors because I think NVIDIA rally just insanely this year. So for potential short, I mean, we could get easily to 266, which is 20 EMA. There's nothing standing in the way. Um, long SOXs, as I said, Tesla puts and MBLY. It uh, looks like it nicely. It is like this giant triangle pattern um, that I see on daily and we retested today again, almost to the 10 EMA and we, we go back up. So like these stocks have really nice uptrends, like on, on MBLY. Um, I find it like safer to trade than, than try to short Nvidia, for example, right? Yeah. Like Nvidia or Microsoft is super strong trends. I always tell people, you know, sure you can try, but be really quick. Don't go to the Definitely. swing trade for like days because these stocks are super powerful and you can get, um, you can lose money. So yeah, you, you, you have to be nimble and quick with the shorts, right? Yeah. I mean, I feel like with the long, sometimes you can give them a little bit more time to work. And as long as you're not really getting like negative catalyst against you, a lot of times you can see uh, stocks hold trends a lot more, but yeah, for the, for shorting a rocket like Nvidia, yeah, you can do it. I've done it in the last two or three weeks too, but you got to be quick. And you got to know that like when it goes against you, you don't fight it. You don't say, oh, no, I'm going to give it another dollar here. No. Oh. I'm going to give it another <laughs> 20 cent. No, no, that, that's easily how you get wrecked. In the Nvidia. same Microsoft. I mean, Microsoft is a very similar chart. Also broke below yeah. the 10, 20, uh, 10 EMA. It's like now approaching maybe slowly to the 20. But who knows? It's also like a little bit of the distribution happening there. But you never know. The stocks can always go higher. So a lot of people just start shorting stuff because they say, oh, it rallied so much. But I mean, stocks can always go higher. Market is definitely not rational. So and, and we can be in an over, so overball territory and high RSI for many days. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to, you know, start shorting things. So it's like yeah. you're going against the trend and that's always uh, risky. So 
I, I love it. And there's something that you mentioned there, I think is very important, right? We're mentioning there some EMAs, right? That you, you're mentioning the 10, I use the nine, but hey, same thing pretty much. You're going to see maybe slight difference and going into the 20, right? I, I think that's very important. And it's not necessarily to get more entries, but understanding that turn, right? And that we could easily get that little move there. So that gives you a little bit of opportunity time to look for that window, right? Yeah. And you know, it's like in trading, it's not about the, it's not about that exact price It's about a level of interest. Yeah. So if it's nine or 10, you get, you, it's a place where you pay attention basically, Definitely. you know, and as you say, like on, on, for example, MBLY, they're in uptrends, they retested to 10 um, exponential moving average. They are going back up. But when you look at like Nvidia, Microsoft, these guys are on the way down. So, you know, they are retesting to the twenty. And then we, we will see what's going to happen around there. Or some people use 21 again, like one, one day difference. It's fine. A lot of people use nine and 21. Fine. You know, it's like level of interest approximate. Nothing is hundred percent in trading. So definitely nothing is 100%. I wish something was because I, I know I would use it and I'd be there every day. I probably wouldn't share it with everyone, but I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but all right. So from now, how do you feel like the spy overall? It does. And, and, and I was, I was in, I'm not going to lie this morning. Everyone's going to say, Mitch, you were in that bull camp. I was in the bull camp, but even now with this daily candle, that's kind of showing up now, it doesn't look that great. No, we're starting to pull back. I wish I could share screen. I don't know. Yeah, you can. You can. Oh, Look, please. It, it, and down at the bottom, you'll see present, the little plus sign in the present. And if you hit that, you're going to see, uh, now you'll see at the top, you'll see some tabs. You can do Chrome. You can do entire screen on the top right. And then you can just share the screen. Okay. Boom. boom. Awesome. I will do I'll it with uh, you guys now because it's easier if I do it, um, you know, if I do it with you. But sadly, so I so last time you joined me from South Africa, where are you this time in the world? Where in the world is Leah the trader? I am in Miami right now. I just landed. I was in Houston. There actually. you go, yeah, Miami. Traders we were there. just there. We had a we had a cannabis conference. We should have let you know. Oh please, yeah. Anytime you guys are in Miami, let me know. I'm here like six months a year, seven months a year. I travel. I was in Houston meet up with amazing traders, with guys that uh, that are just awesome, and we talked stocks. It's and always good. It's yeah. always good to meet with traders, right? I mean, yeah. I, I love it. We're all a family. We're all trying to help yeah. each other out. So there you go. I got your charts up. We can take a look at what you see here. So you yeah. let me know. So the same thing, that's QQQ. I'm actually short, full disclosure. I've been short since this, this kind of thing's happening here. We are again in a distribution zone, but we have the 20 exponential here. So we'll see how it, uh, how it works around there. You know, it's all about like, I'm cautious. I'm looking um, when we get there and I will decide what the price says. You know, if we have any sort of bad news now, we have news that Putin is supposed to attack UK, which of course might be a gossip, but market <laughs> market might be reacting to that. We'll see, you know. Um, so that's like my little little swing. But again, like even QQQ is in a beautiful trend. Like we can't fight it. You know, if you look at the chart, you know, it, it looks nice. Um, I wouldn't be going against the trend too much. So if you do the swing, just be very quick with that. Like sometimes really just overnight. When it's like overboard, you go, you hop on. And oftentimes I, I cover right at the open when I'm up on the position like that, like especially yeah. the shorts. You know, I, I mean, I've had multiple positions like that that just come right back to my entry anyways. So then I'm like, man, at least I took the profits this morning because yeah. it, it would have just been either break even or a loss. And so I, I know that's definitely in this market the way I like it, you know, and, and I've been limiting down a little bit on my profit take a lot of times. Yeah. In, in prior markets. Yeah, I, I could get a 10 percent gain or a 10, uh, 10, 12 percent gainer. But right now. I, I'm not. I'm not looking for ten or twelve percent. I feel like that's a that's a pretty hefty amount in this yes, market. We it is. Be, we want to be bringing that down. Of course, we got to limit our risk a little bit more. But taking like for me right now, it seems to be a good sweet spot. Is like four to six percent. If I can Absolutely. get a six percent, I'm taking Absolutely. that and running. I had that yeah this week really like I I have swings usually I swing yeah. mostly. I wake up in the morning. You know, usually sometimes you it's usually in the morning you have like this really volatile moment, the first couple of minutes, and I look at some of my positions, I'm up four or five percent. I'm out. Like 
imagine like if you do this a couple of times a week or just once a week uh, and you have, you know, a couple of those trades, how much money you make, like. Exactly. That's where people get a little bit lost, right? We get yeah, lost get in lost. all the big winners and, yes. and the small penny names. But yeah. the truth is it adds up. It adds up. And if you can, you know, make four or 5% daily, that's going to be big at the end of the year. Yeah, so. or weekly. Like imagine that SPY maybe will be up this year if 10% if we continue with this job on the whole year. So like people have to understand this when they are trading. And with options the same, like people want like 100%, 200%. Come on, man. Like you're up 30, 40%. Take your gains. Like normally in a different kind of market, I, I know it's better to stay in these positions longer, but if you're just trading and you want to make quick gains, this is a choppy market this year. Like I feel like some of the stocks I could have rebuy, rebought for the same price, like 10 times already, <laughs> just like chopping back and forth. So that's, yeah. that's, that's this market. And I, and I feel like uh, you, you have to, you got to sell the rip, buy the dip and do it all over again if you can. Right. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Uh, but definitely, I, I appreciate you coming on, giving us different plays today, giving us the outlook in the market. I did want to share with the chat here. Uh, you guys can check out. I know that you've been doing a little bit more of webinars on trading psychology. So yeah. I'm sharing in here the link for you. you. Uh, definitely shout out to you in the trading psychology pushing forward. I always love that. I definitely we do a little bit. I do have a book club that we do like trading psychology books. The next time I get to another trading psychology book, so I'm going to definitely invite you on so we can talk a little bit more trading psychology. But always great to have you. Leah the Trader, you guys check her out. You guys see the Twitter right there. I dropped the link for the webinar. So we'll have you back on, Leah. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much, Mitch. Have a great day. Take care. Thanks. Bye. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. We're going to start wrapping up. It's 356. Let's take a look into the market, see what we can find. I still got that uh, kind of short that I got on Meta here. Let's see if we can get a little bounce. Meta's actually going to the downside here. So I'm, I'm trying to find something to bounce to get short in here. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I'm trying to get short some names here, but it's going fast here. Let's look at the SQQ. Uh, that doesn't look too bad here. At least it's pulling back here for a little bit of an attempt on the daily outlook. I'd have to risk maybe off like kind of the 30s. But if we are going to get tech to turn around, of course, the SQQ could start making the lift. I'm actually going to take a swing here on the SQQs. Don't mind taking at least a little one. We'll take a little bit of a piece here. We'll see what happens tomorrow. If we start seeing some more tech names coming to the downside, I got no problem with that. We'll see what happens it could also do the Qs to the short side, but I'm just going to do the Qs, uh, the SQQs here to the long side. Let's see the Sox S pulling back here. Let's see if that gives us an opportunity. I'd like it back at 1925s here, but need a little bit of a pullback here. We'll find out if we actually still see the leak in NVIDIA. That didn't come back much there. AMD, eh, that doesn't look the best there. Tesla, Tesla bounced a little bit there. I, I think... You know, I'll be looking for Tesla to see if it comes back to like 165 tomorrow, but definitely some downside action here. Meta, meta, meta. That one's not looking too bad. We got that one at 214.40. Now we're almost up a full percent there on meta. We'll keep watch on that. Gilead coming back on me. Of course, that one at least bounced there off the VWAP. So glad I took some profit in this one and just left a piece to run. We'll see what happens on that one. And the only one in the red right now, Honeywell, but that's bouncing back as we speak. That's going to be it for me. You guys throw up some tickers. We got about a minute left. I'll take one more name. Ahmed, appreciate you in the chat. Smash it up. All right. What else are we? do we have here? Um, let me take a look here at our overall sectors, see how those are looking here towards the end. Defenses bounced a little bit. Costco, Costco, Costco team. You know how much we've been talking about this 500 move in Costco. Oh, a little bit frustrated that I missed this move today, team. I was even watching it on live trading. If you guys want to check out that stream, definitely check it out. Of course, that's uh, in our morning show. You guys can just look it up on Benzinga. You guys will hear me. I literally talk about Costco and I'm thinking about getting in and I hesitated. I missed this move. It would have been a nice one to get in through there, even 495s, maybe risked off 493, about two points. Two points 
for a nice five point move. That's not too bad. We could have looked for a little bit higher than that 500. This went all the way up to 510 today. So not a bad move at all on Costco. One that we've been looking at for a while. I mean, we've drawn lines here multiple times. We created this on April 19th, just looking for it to kind of break. And there it is, team. There it is. We were watching this even since here when it was back in March 26th. Finally getting through that. I like the outlook on the weekly. If it can really make a move on the monthlies, get through over here towards 528. This is going to be looking really good on Costco. With Costco, I said, look at Walmart. Walmart, if Costco is doing good, maybe Walmart takes off and look at Walmart right now, starting to push and pushing higher. Now it's finally holding 150. I don't mind this at all, team, on a little bit of a swing, but there's the close. Didn't give me a chance to get in there in Walmart. I could take it now, but you guys can see the offer. It's huge further than where I'm at. Of course, we'll keep watch on earning stocks. You guys smash it up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's start swing trading. And I will let you guys know they will not be start swing trading tomorrow. I'm going to be getting ready for the cruise, of course. Um, I will be looking into the markets, keeping up with it. But I got a lot of things here at Benzinga. I got to get in order for, of course, next week to run smoothly. You guys smash the thumbs up. Hope you guys enjoyed my week. We had Christian from Hertz. We had Ryan Rose Biani. We had Option Mike and Leah the Trader today. So smash that thumbs up. I will see you guys like always bright and early on pre-market prep tomorrow. Dennis Dick back in the chair, I hope. And of course, Joel Alconin. Hit the like. We'll see you next time, team.